This is our final product. It started out as an empty area. We added the wall. We did some things to the wall to make it look better. We put the structures on the wall and now we have finished it with lights and interiors and it looks like this. If you would like to see how this came about, please stay tuned. You're watching the New York Seven in Sherwood Subdivision. I'm Harold, thanks for watching. We begin our series of improvements to downtown Sherwood with a look at what we already have. We have the structures in place. We have our one-way street that is existing here. Side streets, street markings are in. So what do we need to do? Well, we already have a substantial series of videos about how we made the structures and put the lights in and put the interiors in. So we won't go over that again, but I will show you a couple things that are needed. We start at the east end of downtown Sherwood and what we see is the hill where the buildings are built. There's an incline road, it's a one-way street that goes down to our layout level. And we see nothing at all here. Now in the real prototype, there are buildings in the background. We don't have a place for that. So what I'm planning to do is we're gonna install what will look like a park here. Essentially a series of trees. We're gonna to have to do something simple. We're gonna to have to do background trees. That is trees that are full in the front and are flat in the back. Additional work will be required to tie in the end of our climb here with the road that enters the scene and on the other side of that road is Sherwood Plumbing Supply. So we'll do some work on that and we'll show you what we're doing coming up. Now we're on to making trees. If you follow these simple steps you can create trees that look something like this and they'll be just fine as background trees around our downtown of Sherwood. So let's see how it's done. It's time to make some trees that will go on the ramp to either side of downtown Sherwood. And the product we're going to use is this product. That's right, Woodland Scenics Tree Armatures. So you laugh. Well, get trees from Scenic Express. Now, well, I have these. We've seen such luminaries as Luke Talon work with them, so I'm sure I can get them to work. Simple process. The tree comes out like this. It's flat. And what you do is twist the trunk. It's made of a soft plastic material. And bend the, leaf, bend the branches so you get something that reminds you of a tree, something that you're interested in looking for. Now in our case, we're making back what I call background trees. So all the foliage is going to be in the front because the tree is going to be stuck right against the backdrop. So here's an example of a couple that I've done. And we have all the branch structure, but if you look at it this way, there aren't any branches in the back. So this will sit up right against the backstop. So we'll do three of those. I'm sure you don't want to see me bending pieces of plastic, so we'll skip that part. After we're done with the three trees, we'll go and paint them a real color of brown and give them a little dry brushing of gray so the bark actually looks like tree bark. So please stay tuned. Now it's time to put the leaves on our armature. We're going to use medium green foliage from Woodland Scenics. This is what it looks like. It comes out in a little carrier sheet and you take this apart you tease it out and then you apply it to the branches I'll show you how that's done it 
take our canopy glue and he's sort of the underside of the tree. Canopy glue on there. Take our little piece we've teased out. You don't want things sticking out like that. Like that. And then you apply it to the underside of the branch. And you continue doing that until you've done all the undersides of all the branches. And then you start on the top. When you've applied the material to the bottom of the branches, it looks like this. This took about uh, 10 minutes. At this point, you're ready to apply material to the top of the branches. It's the same process except on the top. And we'll look at the results of that in a moment. 10 minutes more work and you've applied the leaf material to the top of the branches and you have something like this. We're not going for full coverage, as you golfers know, a tree is mostly air. And you might be wondering about this material here. Those are things that fell off when we stretched and pulled on the leaf material. Those are leaves that will be added to the tree later. We've now arrived at the point where it's time to finish our tree. We'll do two things. First of all, a good spray of scenic cement. Then, these things that were on the top of the counter that fell off when we were, that's too big, when we were um, adding the branch structure, the leaf structure, they are now leaves. And we can drizzle those on, we've got a lot of them. So this tree's done. We return our attention to the wall. This is the structure on which downtown Sherwood sits. <clears throat> You'll recall the structures are in the middle, and then there are these ramps that take take you from the where the structures are down to the layout level. What you're looking at is the ramp that goes up. This is the uh, one on the west side. This area here will be covered with ground foam and trees as though it's a municipal park. This area here is of course our roadway which goes up on into the town. And if you've already seen we've built the trees. We're going to position them here and then put some um, ground foam on the uh, surface to simulate what's going to be a well manicured park so we aren't going to see the wild look that we've seen other places on the layout this will be more of a golf course look. The theory being it's maintained well by the local government. So we'll get started with that work and we'll be back when we have something to show you. We have made some progress on the west end of the wall. You'll see our roadway is here. We've installed some curbings from strip styrene right here. And we've installed the walkway so our pedestrians can access the business district which is up on top of the wall. The next thing we're going to do is to put in some grass right here and you might be able to see some holes. We've already pre-drilled the holes that will support our trees. So we'll get started masking this off and we'll show you putting the grass in in just a moment. We are about to apply a layer of full strength white glue and then we're going to put the grass on top of that. Now let's keep in mind that this is going to be a manicured municipal area, so we're going to get a lot of grass and we'll have more or less a golf course look. The grass will be uniform because it's being maintained by the city. The pegs that you see here, these are the holes that are already drilled for the trees. And I put these toothpicks in there so we'll remember where the holes are. So we take our white glue and we just spread it around. 
White glue is in. We'll give it a few minutes to set up. Next step, we're going to apply Woodland Scenics Blended Turf Green Blend. And we're going to put it all over. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll wait for that to dry and then we'll move on with the next step. With our ground foam in place, having been secured by the white glue and it's all dried, we're now going to fix it into place using a two-part method. First, we soak the area with 70% isopropyl alcohol. I've got this sitting on a an incline. What I'm trying to do is prevent the alcohol from running into my roadway and ruining the roadway. So we just keep doing this until the area is thoroughly soaked. We use the alcohol as a wetting agent to help the scenic cement, which we're about to use, to penetrate fully. So we take the product we're using, Woodland Scenic, Scenic Cement. We shook the bottle thoroughly, and now we're going to apply it. So it's the same as the alcohol. Just drop it on there. Let it soak in. And we keep doing that until it's all soaked. Our next step is to apply some static grass. And the first part of doing that is to give the static grass something to stick to. So we're going to add some more scenic cement. And I'll just do one little section here so you can see what I'm doing. I want this to be really wet. It should be wet enough. Static grass that I'm using is this product. Can really see that, can you? There we go. Static grass flock by Woodland Scenics, medium green. The applicator is a Nook Grassmaster. There it is. And the way it's done. Find the end, you have this metal clip, and you put it in the area, and you just start dispensing the static grass. If you get really close to it, you can get it to stand up. I'm not sure how well that shows up on the camera, but we now have some texture. So that's the static grass portion of this application. We have completed application of the static grass. This section is almost done. We're going to put a little pathway in here. That's why the tape is there. So we're going to let this all dry and then put the pathway in. This is the west end of the wall. We still have to do this very same thing in the east end which we will certainly do. We don't need to show you that because you've already seen it's the same process. So when we have more to show you, we will return. We return now to our wall and we can see that downtown Sherwood buildings have been put into place permanently. The wiring has all been run down through the layout and we'll look around and see what we can see. 
And what we see mostly is what we have seen before with our three sets of structures and our two side roads. So that's what it looks like. I've got half the lights uh, attached. There are a total of 25 lights and I had to stop for two reasons. One, my back was killing me from working out under the layout. The second reason is I needed six port sharing devices. I only had three, so I installed those and ordered the other three. They have come in now so I can resume work under the layout and connect all the lights. When I've done that, we'll try to show you what it looks like at night. But for now, that's the picture. We're going to move on to a little story about connecting the town center to our road system. That will be in just a moment. Our downtown business district is not going to get much business unless people can get there. So we have to build a road connection from our, where the downtown business district ends right here, to our street, which we already installed as part of the work on Sherwood Plumbing Supply. This is done with Smoothit. In the process of connecting the two with some sheet styrene that I've fabricated that will go right over here. And the reason I've done that is this elevation here is a bit higher than this elevation here. So we want to have a smooth transition from this part to this part. And we're going to paint it as the roadway and curbing and sidewalk and we'll put some grass in just like we did for downtown Sherwood. So we'll see more of that coming up. We return now to the east end of downtown Sherwood. And you might recall that we had no connection to the road and we fabricated this connection. You can see our truck is on there. And we've put in the same sort of scenery that we had climbing, the wall, climbing up to downtown Sherwood. We have curbing and we have a sidewalk. It all connects to our road. Right here, the other connection to the road being right here, that's Sherwood Plumbing Supply. What we have not done is to do something in this area. It's just sort of complete this scene. I'm kind of debating what I want to do there. So I'm not sure at this point. Other things that aren't done We haven't installed the trees. I do have the additional trees that I mentioned, and I have started work on them, but they're not done. So we'll put the trees in place when that's been completed. And I should mention from a couple of segments ago, we did in fact complete the ballasting. With the exception of doing something with the roadway here and putting in the trees, this is pretty much done. What I've elected to do is not finish the work on the west end of Sherwood because I'm not sure what's going to go in there. So that'll be for another time. But at this point we're nearly done and we'll see the final product coming up. We have returned to our downtown scene where all the lights have been installed. And what you're looking at is a daytime view. And you can see the interiors of the structures are lighted up and you can actually see something that's going on in there. So that was our objective. Now we'll see if we can get a nighttime view. Here's our nighttime view as best I could get it with the camera settings available. And we see all the structures are illuminated. You can see right inside them. And it's a reasonably attractive nighttime scene. So that's what we were going for, both daytime and nighttime. We have finished the rest of the scene by adding the trees that you can see there. We've added a population and some vehicles to make the town look alive. And we finished with trees on the other or west end of Sherwood. 
So that's the progress that we have made to date. This area is pretty much finished. We'll move on to the next area, which will be the train station. So I hope you join us for that. And we thank you for watching the Norfolk Southern Sherwood Subdivision.